What's poppin' y'all? I'm Shy Ill and we back at it with a fatal rejection, the story of Merlin Santana. The video I'll be reacting to was done by Evil Intentions. I'll have them linked in the description. A lot of lessons to be learned from this story. I've always thought this story was a cautionary tale that needed to be told, so here we are. I'm glad Evil Intentions told it. I'm here to react to it. I appreciate you being here. If you have yet to subscribe to the channel, please do. And if you enjoy what I do, hit that like button. Let's get this algorithm poppin'. Let's get it. Blood. The butter. The butter. <laughs> Yo, I'm Romeo. I got to make an entrance. Nice soup. Come with an eight track. <laughs> what you're watching right now are scenes taken from sitcoms The Steve Harvey Show and The Cosby Show. Both feature a rising star from New York City whose talents would get him recognition and take him as far as he wanted to go. I think Shorty, had he lived, could have played Pac. I think Shorty could have played Tupac easily. I think he had the acting chops. His name was Merlin Santana from the Upper West Side of New York City. His name was quickly becoming known and the future stars many talents were beginning to truly shine. But one day, without anyone suspecting it, Merlin's life would be cut short when he became the center of a revenge plot that he had nothing to do with. Whenever you hear stories about people making it out of the hood and becoming successful at something bigger than themselves, for most of us, it's a great feeling. It gives us that feeling that if they can do it, so can I. I can make it out too. For me, I think about names like the Waynes Brothers, who grew up in the projects down in Chelsea. They became hugely successful and they brought the whole family along for the ride. Jordan Peele is one of the most successful and respected directors in the game right now. And he was raised on the Upper West Side by a single mom and he made it out. A long list of musical acts from Jay-Z to Cardi B, from Brooklyn to the Bronx, have all made it out the hood and achieved mass success. But there's also a very long list of those who did everything they could to make it out and not get caught up. Somehow the harsh code of the streets still take them under anyway. Today on Evil Intentions, the story of Merlin Santana. Shout out Evil Intentions. Merlin Santana was born on March 14th, 1976. I did not know till this very moment that Merlin Santana and I share a birthday. Salutes Merlin Santana. City. Merlin was born to his mother, a woman by the name of Leah Santana, a Dominican native. From the moment that Merlin was about to be born, life would immediately throw a curveball at Leah, whom was told by doctors that if Merlin was born, it would be a true miracle. Leah had complications with birth, giving Merlin a 50-50 chance of surviving, which of course was just about the scariest thing that a parent can hear. But Merlin pulled through and beat those odds. Leah wanted to find a name that really represented her child and his battle to survive. She would name him Merlin, as in Merlin the Magician, one of King Arthur's wizards, hmm. and he'd often introduce himself to people as this. Leah felt this name fit her child perfectly because it was sorta of like magic. Merlin was her miracle child. Merlin was described as a very funny and charismatic little boy. As far back as anyone can remember, he was always known for making jokes and making people laugh. Merlin's personality was as bright as could be, and for people who were on the hunt for talent, it was very easy to see that Merlin had something special about him. So many of those special kids get lost in the hood. Those kids that you look at and you know they have the charisma. See, acting is nothing but confidence and charisma and, and, and those things manifesting in a character. It's plenty of those kids that you walk by in the hood and you see and you know they're special. You know they're funny. You know they're hilarious. But there's only a certain amount that filter through to the big picture, to the big Hollywood showbiz scheme. A lot of those charismatic kids that could be your next Tupac, your next Denzel Washington, Washington, your next Jennifer Lopez, those kids get overlooked because there's so many other things going on in the family that that kid's charisma, that kid's talent, that kid's magic takes a back seat to everything else. So a lot of those kids are lost in the hood. And Mr. Jose Ortiz from Evil Intentions seems to know that as well. Merlin and his mother were out one day when by chance, they came across a talent scout and a conversation started. He noticed Merlin's charisma and he strongly felt that to some capacity, Merlin belonged on TV or on the big screen. So he right. would suggest that Merlin's mother try getting him into the fast-paced world of show business. Hmm. The talent scout would suggest that Leia take Merlin to an audition for a fast food campaign that was happening soon. 
Merlin landed the job and here started his love and passion for the big screen. Having started out young, the world of acting was an open playing field for Merlin, and he had a major advantage over others who were on the same path as him. Merlin was bilingual, speaking both English and Spanish, making for more opportunities when it came to castings. Once Merlin landed that fast food ad commercial, things never quite slowed down, and he was well on his way to stardom. The neighborhood Merlin grew up in around the Upper West Side was well known for being an area where pretty much anything can happen. Anything from gang violence to drug dealing to drug abuse, all very common, especially in the 80s and 90s. Merlin attended Ascension School on Upper Manhattan's 108th Street, where he would make a ton of friends and everyone knew him. But being in a neighborhood with a reputation, acting for Merlin was a way to keep him out of trouble and not land him in situations where the environment around him could send him down the wrong path. Those kids that we talk about, those magic kids that get lost in the hood, they don't get those opportunities. They don't get to manifest that. So it's a sad story that he got to and then what happened to him happened to him. The environment around him could send him down the wrong path. Definitely not an easy task. As someone who grew up in the same neighborhood as Merlin and who still has family and friends there, I can tell you from personal experience that this area of the Upper West Side wasn't always so calm. In the 90s, drug wars ran rampant between rival crews. The neighborhood often had curfews due to the violence. And at the root of it all was money, power, and respect. She had her work cut out for her. But Merlin's mother knew her son had a gift, and she was determined to see Merlin succeed and not become a statistic. Mothers, don't ignore those things that you see in your children. Yeah, everybody thinks their child is special, and we have to be realistic sometimes. But if you see a spark in your child, feed that spark. If you see that child has an interest in something and you're capable of somehow feeding that spark, please do so, man. These shorties need it. You know, it's hard to get a kid to want to be involved in certain things. But when the kid finds something that he wants to be involved in or she wants to be involved in, feed that if you're a parent that understands that you wanted to live a dream and you didn't get your opportunity and you see that your child is capable feed that nurture that promote that push that support that in 1990 merlin's life would be forever changed when he was casted in a play called hey little walter now he didn't know it at this point but this one gig would change things forever sitting in the crowd on one of the nights that merlin performed was bill cosby hmm. he was so impressed by merlin's performance and portrayal of this character that Cosby would end up having them write a new character into the immensely popular Cosby show. Merlin would portray the lovable and funny Stanley, Rudy Huxtable's boy. Stanley tried to come in there and get Bud out the picture. Friend. Once Merlin landed this gig, his career took off with no signs of slowing down. Once the Cosby show was coming to an end, Merlin was immediately casted in another TV sitcom called Getting By. He was casted alongside Dion Richmond, another child star and friend of Merlin's and also a New York native who grew up in the Harlem section of New York. But the two of them had great chemistry on screen and they knew each other for a while from their time on The Cosby Show. Getting By would air between March of 1993 and June of 1994 when it was canceled. Sometime later, Merlin would make a move from New York City to Los Angeles at the age of only 19. He was well on his way. He was very much focused and decided he would spend his time in North Hollywood, laying low key in the San Fernando Valley. He was excited. He was making the right decisions. He was chasing the game. You know, he was doing his thing. He had another show after the Cosby show. Then he ended up going to Cali. So he's been actively pursuing the game. And I think he would have been a big star. He was excited to be pursuing his dreams and living on his own. He would keep in touch with family and friends constantly. And work continued to flow in for Merlin. And in 1996, he would land yet another pivotal role for his career. When he was casted as Romeo Santana, in the immensely popular Steve Harvey show. Now, while others in the spotlight and in positions like Merlin's battled certain demons that came with stardom, Merlin always stood clear of the threats. He stood away from drugs, he kept focus, and by the time his career was flourishing, Merlin would start to take the steps to also starting a music career. He was also a talented rapper, and he had the image and popularity that would eventually come with that role. It was even said that Merlin might have had a good amount of music that never saw the light of day. He took music just as serious as he did acting. During his time on The Steve Harvey Show, Merlin would portray Romeo, a student at Booker T. Washington High School on Chicago's West Side. He was a smooth-talking playboy who had a great reputation with the ladies. Although a sitcom, in the show, Merlin would display a wide variety of talents, 
showing how good no he had the chops he could play the drama he could play the comedy he played it all and then to have a good head on his shoulders too at the same time to avoid the pitfalls of hollywood to avoid the pitfalls of, of life only for what happened to him to happen to him showing how good of an actor he was when it came to serious roles as well as comedy the character of romeo would begin to blend with the real life merlin who was becoming an even bigger ladies man on and off the screen he was starting to get recognized on the streets his hard work and all those years on screen was paying off and the sky was the limit for him. He was already getting famous starring in movie roles alongside Eddie Murphy and Robert De Niro. But still, he never forgot where he came from. Although he was already getting money and living his dream, he could often be seen on his old block of 107th and Manhattan Avenue, riding a motorcycle around and being among the peers he grew up with. He was as down to earth as they came. Over the course of his career, Merlin would also make appearances on shows like Moesha, Sister Sister, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, and Under One Roof, just to name a few. Don't you play the rat unless you want to wind up in the sewer like one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Good. I know I exactly what you're saying. Hold on a minute. Mira, este mi nieto. El papá de él fue el que tú casi le metiste una bala. Así que no enseña la cara por aquí o la cosa se va a poner heavy, mi hermano. Tú me estás oyendo? Yeah, so I, I, I like that you know. Spanish on that. Where did you learn to talk like that? My mom, she was Dominican. The future was very bright for Merlin. He knew it, and everybody else around him knew it. But unfortunately, when you're an up-and-coming star from a certain background, you can't ever be too sure if the intentions of those around you are pure. Merlin's accolades were beginning to pile up, receiving nominations from the NAACP Image Awards as well as the Alma Awards, an award ceremony that honors Latinos in the industry. But on the evening of Friday, November 8th, 2002, a certain set of events would unfold, resulting in the young star's tragic passing, and nobody saw it coming. On this day, Merlin was spending the night recording music at a friend's home in the Crenshaw District of Los Angeles, California. He was accompanied by one of his best friends, another talented actor by the name of Brandon Quentin Adams, known for his work on cult classics, The People Under the Stairs, and bigger movies. A lot of people will tell you that's the same kid. A lot of people think that's the same kid. He's like the Sandlot, and also for portraying the kid version of Michael Jackson in the mini version of Bad. He would also go on to star in other popular shows like The Fresh Prince, Moesha, Sister Sister, and many others. Merlin had originally made plans to go back home to New York City so that he could visit friends and family. He wasn't even supposed to be in Los Angeles this week but he would remain in Los Angeles longer than he was supposed to because of a last minute audition for a new TV show. He changed his plans and his trip to New York never happened. Later that evening, around midnight, Merlin would make a call to a woman who went by the name of Mercedes. Mercedes was someone Merlin and Brandon met some time before at a Chinese restaurant in LA. The woman introduced herself and she knew she recognized him from the Steve Harvey show. Merlin was flattered and happy to be recognized as anyone would be. He was living out his dream and people were starting to take notice. According to sources, the two would then end up having a perfectly consensual night together and all seemed to be normal. He made that call to Mercedes and asked her if she wanted to hang out with him and a few of his friends, which she was fine with. But when she got there, things seemed very off. Brandon would notice that Mercedes seemed out of sorts and very much nervous to be in the home. She could be seen walking about the home and acting strangely. She did this for a short while and then made a phone call before abruptly saying that she needed to go. As she walked out of the home, Brandon would watch her make her way out and when he came to the front of the house, he could see Mercedes getting to a large vehicle with two men inside. The same two men who had dropped her off at the home to begin with, even though Merlin and Brandon didn't know that. The vehicle would drive off for a few blocks and then stopped. Brandon had a strong feeling that in reality, Mercedes was just casing the home and maybe it was best if him and Merlin made their way out because things just didn't. Young brothers, whether you getting it, you not getting it. Pay attention to what's going on around you, man. You've heard the story a million times. It just happened to DJ Academics recently that his girl had a friend from out of town in the crib. She went down and left a door unlocked. Luckily, Axe girl walked past and locked the door. Two dudes try to get in Axe house. Old girl tried to give them access. The police realized the connection when they realized that her car in the driveway had the same state license plate as the car that they was chasing that supposedly was trying to get an axe house. So this is not new. Women been setting dudes up forever. Pay attention, man. Pay attention to who you have in your bed, to who you have in your home, to who you have around you. Because everybody don't have the best intentions. You know what I'm saying? They might have that good good. They might have that gawk gawk. 
But at the end of the day, is it worth it if she got her big brother and her cousins sitting outside ready to jump the fence with AKs and AR? Problem. Brandon had a strong feeling that in reality, Mercedes was just casing the home and maybe it was best if him and Merlin made their way out because things just didn't feel right. The two would approach their vehicle to leave the area, but when they got inside the car, the situation would quickly escalate from a suspicion of a setup to a full-blown attack. Brandon would be in the driver's seat and Merlin in the passenger side when Brandon looked at the side mirror and saw a red laser. As he looked closer, he could see two men running toward their car, both armed with guns. Brandon would yell for Merlin to duck before pulling off as fast as he could, but as he did that, the two men would begin to fire. The chaotic scene lasted nothing but a few seconds, but those few seconds were enough to change everything forever. As one of the men shot toward the vehicle, one of the bullets would enter through the car's trunk. The trajectory of the bullet would go through the passenger side seat and strike Merlin in the back of the head, killing him instantly. Brandon would look over and see Merlin slumped forward as he yelled his name, hoping that the injury wasn't as bad as it seemed, hoping that Merlin would say something. But Merlin was unresponsive as he bled profusely from his head, indicating that this was much worse. Brandon would flag down a patrol car that happened to be passing by them and told them what happened, but it was too late. Merlin was gone. The only question was, why? As police and EMS combed through the vehicle Merlin was killed in, they'd find his cell phone and began to investigate who he last spoke to. Brandon would tell authorities about Merlin's call to Mercedes and how strangely she had been behaving. So the cops thought of an idea. They had Brandon make a call to Mercedes where he would ask her to meet him at a restaurant. She would agree to meet, which was very surprising. But when she- Yeah, she's a dummy. She should have saw that one coming. They should have saw her coming. But when she did, officers were there waiting to take her in for questioning. It was here that authorities would learn the true reason behind Merlin's death. According to reports, it was said that Mercedes, whose real name was Monique King, had spoken to Merlin on one occasion after they hooked up. She wanted more of a relationship with Merlin, as where he was constantly on the move and not looking for anything very serious. She became highly upset at this and would go back to two men, 21-year-old Damien Andre Gates, said by some to be Mercedes' boyfriend, and 25-year-old Brandon Douglas Bynes. She would tell the two men that Merlin and her were together, but it was against her will, because Merlin forced himself on her and violated her. See that? A sucker-ass chick wants to hold on to a dude. Sucker-ass sucker -ass chick already got a sucker-ass boyfriend. Sucker-ass chick gets denied by the dude she wants to be with, so she goes running back to her sucker-ass boyfriend and tells them that her sucker ass got forced and that never happened. What happened? Potential was killed. When at the end of the day, her and her boyfriend had none. The two men seeked revenge for Monique. It was later learned that she had also told Merlin that she was of legal age. But in actuality, this entire plan, the vicious lie that led to the death of the talented young man, all came from the mind of a 15 year old girl. Not just a sucker ass chick, a sucker ass child, 15 year old lied about her age and then lied about the circumstances in which she was with Merlin, which in turn got Merlin killed. It's a hell of a web spun right there. At first, when questioned, Monique argued that she did nothing wrong and had nothing to say until one officer would let her know that she could either be a suspect or be a witness to what happened, seeing as how nobody else saw what happened. After hours of questioning, she herself admitted to lying to these men and having Merlin killed. The two men took her word and followed through with the murder of someone who did absolutely nothing to deserve it. A massive talent taken much too soon, and all because of a girl who couldn't handle rejection. Period. And two men who were- Period, feelings. Teach your children how to deal with their feelings. You don't know, you, most of you adults don't know how to deal with your feelings, but teach your kid how to deal with rejection, man. Some of these kids don't have no parents to teach them that. And it reminds me of that video that I see. It's it's a clip of a, a I don't remember what podcast it was from. I believe it was Mano's podcast or something. But there was a chick talking about, uh, ladies, stop running to your brothers and cousins about everything that happens to you. Every time you're mad, every time you hurt. You're getting men killed over your hurt little feelings. Nobody cares about your feelings. Go cry about it in a mirror. And we can say, oh, she was 15 years old. Well, guess what? I know a lot of solid-minded 15-year-olds. She knew what she was doing. She was smart enough to finagle all of that. She pulled it off, really. And all because of a girl who couldn't handle rejection and two men who were stupid enough to believe her lies, throwing their own lives away in the process. Brandon Douglas Bynes was sentenced to 23 years for his role in the death of Merlin Santana. Damian Gates, the man responsible for the shot that killed Merlin, was sentenced to 70 years to life in prison. 
Monique King, whom lied and set the whole thing up, was a juvenile and tried as an adult. But being tried as an adult really didn't mean too much, since she would only be sentenced to the California Youth Authority, a place for young offenders, Disgusting. to be released at the young age of just 25 years old. Meaning... So now she gets to live a life. She took Buddy's life because she was... so. She was playing this dummy. She played him like a fool. Her boyfriend, he, he super got played. And he probably knew her age, and he definitely didn't look 15 years old. So he's a, he was a pig himself. But she gets to live a life now. I disagree with that. She took a life over her little fake-ass feelings, and she gets to live a life. She could come out and live a somewhat normal life. At the very least, she had her life. Something that Merlin lost, and all because he crossed paths with her. Merlin Santana was buried at St. Raymond's Cemetery in the Bronx. Merlin leaves behind a lot of family and friends who still speak fondly of him to this day and who miss him very much. His short time with us, he was able to show us that if you want something bad enough, it doesn't matter where you came from, you could get your hands on it. And if you still want it that bad when you have your hands on it, you could take those dreams as far as you want and take control of your future. He was the perfect example of what it means to make it out the hood and make those around you proud to see you rise. Proud to see you become a part of something much bigger than yourself. Proud to know that someone from somewhere just like you and me could reach for the stars and leave a lasting impression. We may never get to witness how massive of a star Merlin Santana would have undoubtedly been right now. But for all of us who recognized his talents and saw how far he had already been, we knew exactly how far he was going. Rest in peace to Merlin Santana and my deepest condolences go out to his family and loved ones. I had to jump up there and grab it, but I did, you know, um, I did my best. And uh, it was definitely a challenge, for sure. Whatever's next, man, you know, I can't call it. Salute to Evil Intentions and Jose Ortiz for making this video. I appreciate it. Moral of the story, moral of the story is beware of a bum-ass bitch and her bum-ass boyfriend. F*** your feelings. I appreciate you being here. If you have yet to subscribe to the channel, please do. And if you enjoy what I do, hit that like button. Let's get this algorithm popping.